Hey everybody, welcome to Don't Copy That Floppy. I'm your host Lex. I'm Dan. I'm enjoying a fish dinner at the moment. Oh, such a delightful fish. <laughs> so well breaded. <laughs> I already ate my roast beef. <laughs> that was my dinner. I'm late. My dinner's late. Um, we're we're a video game news podcast on Ship It uh, Radio. We, we're not like a dinner show. Technically, I guess. I we should know. become a dinner show. We should become a dinner show. Um, we talk about the uh, latest news in the video game community um, and industry uh, every Friday from 7 to 8 p.m. We broadcast live. Um, we got Facebook, a Twitter, a Steam group, an iTunes page. We got it all. We got a YouTube now. We got a YouTube even now, which we is also just don't copy that floppy, right? Yep. Everything is just don't copy that floppy on all those sites, except for Twitter, which is at DCTF Podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, you can find us on all those places and like us, follow us, subscribe to us, worship us, <laughs> whatever you want to <laughs> Definitely do. Definitely do that last thing. Yeah, for sure. We'll get more power. <laughs> um, so we got a whole lot of stuff this week. We got we got Kickstarter stuff. We like to do some Kickstarter stuff. We got quite a bit of it. We got uh, a, a cool bit. a cool early access game on Steam. And then a little stuff, little word from Valve about how they feel about some of the activity going on on Steam right now. Oh yeah. Um, some general stuff about uh, some developers, some games that may not be coming out anymore. Aww. Some games that are still coming out. Um, some general stuff in the, in the uh, vein of the swatting phenomenon that has become such a thing. I guess. Unfortunately, this is, that's online, actually a really sad story. But when we get into streamer. that later, yeah. yeah. We also have another sad story about one Mr. Peter Molyneux. Um, well, sad maybe, I guess. <laughs> maybe. Hey, do you guys want a Shulk amiibo? You might have another chance, but probably not. But probably not. You're not going to get one. Don't get your hopes up. And hey, guys, do you like asteroids? Stay tuned until the end. <laughs> <laughs> the arcade classic. Yeah. Um, oh, um, also a little story about um, a cute goat in WoW. Oh, that too. Um, and we, we usually wrap up each show by just talking about what games are going to be coming out in the next couple weeks. Um, so we'll do that. And I'll probably gush a little bit about Monster Hunter if we have time. Uh, Monster Hunter 4 came, came out. Yeah. Majora's Mask came out too, but that's just a Zelda game, so nobody really cared. You already know what happens. You already know what happens. <laughs> There's three days, the moon's fallen, what, what do you want? <laughs> um, so yeah, let's get, let's get right into it. Um, Lex, tell us about Strength of the Sword Ultimate. I know what you're thinking, Strength of the Sword Ultimate. That does that sounds like a generic fantasy game. Uh, it's not actually. It really, it actually isn't. It's uh, it's a Kickstarter that's happening right now. Yes. It's actually already met its goal, which was very modest. It was like fourteen thousand dollars compared to all, like other game Kickstarters we've been looking at lately. Is tiny. Ah, it's bizarre. It's tiny. Um, but uh, but Strength of the Sword Ultimate is a brawler, a three D brawler. In which you play a sort of knight golem, yeah, and you just robot guy. yeah, and you just fight a lot of medieval fantasy monsters, pretty yeah. much. Uh, and the combat mechanics look really solid and like tons of fun. Yeah, it, the whole game is designed as kind of like a three D fighter mm -hmm. um, with really complex moves and abilities, ways to interact with the terrain and and uh, um, oh, and lots like of that. different item options and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's got pretty, it's got an interesting visual style too. Very sort of uh, exaggerated, yeah, kind of almost in like a Tim Burton-y sort of way. Yeah, yeah, but more colorful. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was very cool. Um, it's already funded, but there's still 25 days left on its Kickstarter, so you can still go get more to it. They've got some stretch, stretch goals lined, lined up already, don't they? I'm pretty sure they do. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, this game looks super neat. Um, so keep an eye on that. Um, I don't think we really have too much more to say about it, but we do have updates on the two other Kickstarters we've been talking about for the past couple of weeks. And both of those, if you, the, the two one Kickstarters we're about to talk about, if you haven't supported them yet, you totally should, because yes. they need it. Yeah, they're both kind of shaky right now, um, but they both look really great. Um, the first of those is Star Mazer. Now, we talked about both of these last week, but this was the part of our podcast that we lost from yes. last week. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Star Mazer is the point-and-click adventure shoot-em-up in space. 
It's also retro sexy. It is retro that. sexy. It says it right there. It says it right um, there. It also only has seven days left to go on its funding, only and only it still two. needs thirty-three, about thirty-three thousand um, dollars, out of its one hundred sixty thousand dollar goal. Mm -hmm. So that's still quite a bit of money to scratch together in a week. But in the past week, it's they got about. 40, 50, or 50,000. Yeah, because we, so when we talked about it last week, our big story about it was how, because we reported on it when it first started. Yeah. And then last week we reported on it saying, oh, this probably isn't going to make it because it's got... They're like just shy of halfway. Yeah, and it had two weeks left, and usually the way Kickstarters work, if you haven't earned like two-thirds or three-fourths of your money by that point, you're not going to make it. Yeah. Uh, but in the past... Like three or four days, they have done a ridiculous advertising push because they right. won't give up. Yeah, no, they're they are determined, um, and included in that advertising push um, is the announcement that uh, they've added um, a new per, uh, new composer to the game to do some music for them, and several high profile crossovers with other successful Kickstarter games. Um, including Children of Morta, which neither of us had heard of. No. <laughs> um, I'm not really I'm so not sure what this is. We probably should have checked that out. Um, Hyper Light Drifter and Shovel Knight. Yeah. Um, and that's really cool. We are big Shovel Knight fans. So yes. it was sweet. Um, uh, they also announced the voice cast for the game. Um, you mentioned how you thought um, it was interesting that they went with voices, given that they could have cut so much out of their budget. By not, I don't know how much they would have been able yeah. to cut out. Well, typically, but voice it's... acting is a pretty good, like a pretty good chunk of money. Um, I wasn't even aware this game was going to have voice acting. Well, I knew that. Actually. I remember. I remember reading early on that it was going to have voice acting, yeah. full voice acting, and I thought for a point and click adventure game, that's a lot of voice acting, and that's cool. And a lot of those back in the day were voiced, though. Yeah, um, like Day of the Tentacle and all those Lucas Arts ones were often fully voiced. Mm -hmm. So. So I thought it was very impressive at first, but then as they like weren't making quite enough money, I was like, "You guys could have totally cut this and yeah, like and made maybe, your goal maybe lower, been a little closer." But at the same time, it's not all is not lost. They got seven days left to make this push, and they they made more than they need to now in the last week. So yeah, they have made man. They have really started to rebound, and so they had done. They released special content to Destructoid, and then also to Polygon. Yeah, and I think um, maybe this crossover info we got off the Destructoid article from the twelfth. Yeah. Uh, so my assumption is that they have more of an advertising plan, like they're they're going to continue pushing as hard as they have been. Yes. Um, oh, the new composer, by the way, um, was Vince DiCola, who apparently was composer on um, composer for the nineteen eighty six Transformers movie soundtrack. Great. As well as, as well as a composer on Rocky IV. Amazing. Also great. <laughs> well, what's funny is they already have, like, an all-star team of composers before they added that they guy. Added this guy. So this... Actually, I'll bring this up after we talk about our next Kickstarter, but there's something I want to bring up about Kickstarter. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's Star Mazer looking up, which is good. Because um, yeah. that's one we really Fingers excited crossed. For. The other one, not looking as up. This, this one is Strafe. The nineteen the the nineteen ninety sixiest first person shooter you could possibly get on your home computer system. <laughs> um, this game is currently sitting at one hundred twenty thousand of its one hundred eighty five thousand dollar goal, with five days left. Ooh. Um, now I want to point out they made a pretty big push in the last week too. Yeah, they released info. Um, they actually released a a demo. Or not a demo. It was they, an early build. Yeah, they specifically said that it wasn't a demo. It was an early, like, test build um, of the game. But for Oculus. Oh, really? That they sent out to people. They, they, they sent it out to at least one um, YouTube, like, Let's Play channel as well. Mm. Um, the Best Friends channel did a little video about it to give them, like, a, a little push. Um, I don't know if any other YouTube channels were given that early access. Like, look at it. But they're definitely doing some stuff to try and get people in in these last five days. Um, but I was not aware of this Oculus Rift demo build. That sounds pretty cool. I could be wrong. You should scroll down and make sure I'm not lying. Okay. Uh, just go to the updates. Let's update. Ooh. It's, there it uh, there it is. Um, um, yeah. The Strafe Oculus VR test room. Yeah. Can you handle the intense gameplay? 
<laughs> so yeah, they did do that, and it's yeah. uh, it's basically just a big room you can run around in to see what the 3D VR is like for this game. As they say on their own Kickstarter, it's basically a big empty room for you to run around in and try to get sick. <laughs> uh, so this was that was a great thing to release. If they had released that like two weeks ago, they they'd might be, be in better shape. Yeah, they'd be doing better. But uh, so I so I feel like with uh, with Star Mazer, assuming their advertising push continues, they could make it. I think with Strafe, they're probably not going to still, despite their best efforts, uh, which is sad. It is sad. But it brings me to my greater point about both of these games, which is, uh, it seems like Kickstarter funding has fallen off recently, because neither of these games were asking for absurd amounts of money, nope. especially compared to other games that have been on Kickstarter. Well, compared to, um, the one that stands out most in my mind is Human Resources, which looked really cool. And was asking for two million. Well, they were asking for two million. Which is a lot of money. Yeah, because with was... them being established already, mm-hmm. that developer, that's still a big chunk of change. And how much did they end up making? Like one point two. Yeah, or so they I still broke say. the million dollar mark. Yeah. Uh, and these games are asking for like in the hundred thousands. Yeah. Uh, and granted, there's much less to them. Yeah. But that's still. But, but these considering both, these both seem like things that should be funded, though. Yeah, already. They should have been funded, like, their first week. These games are complete enough ideas, cool enough ideas, and have sh- been shown to be, like, good enough, by far, to warrant the price. They also did, um, a lot of successful Kickstarter games, like... And these like, are staff picks, too. Yeah. They're right on the front page. Yeah, a lot of, so a lot of successful Kickstarter games, like Shovel Knight and, like, um... Uh, Planetary Annihilation, and yeah. even and even though Human Resources wasn't successful, they they all sort of did the same sort of initial advertising push where there's like they got their name out there, yeah, and they showed how like their gameplay and how cool the game was yeah. and their concept. They made an appealing case. Shovel Knight, I know, released demos to lots of people, yeah, um, during their Kickstarter time. Uh, and Strafe and Star Mazer both did that too. And then they continue to do more than that. Right. In fact, I think they've both gone above and beyond in terms of cool advertising stuff than, like, any of the past Kickstarter games have. And they yeah. still can't get all their funding, so which is baffling about, to me. Last year, we talked about the numbers on Kickstarter. Um, as far as the consistency of games getting funded and games not getting funded, and how much money was actually given to make all these games and stuff, and how it was on, like, a big upswing... But you and I actually talked about how we were curious if this would continue into 2015. Because um, 2014 was like the year of the Kickstarter game. Yeah. In a lot of ways. Because that's when they really started coming out. And a bunch more started going up on the site and everything. So now we're in 2015 and... Not doing so well. It's not looking great. I mean, it's not like things aren't getting funded, but like... Some really nice high-profile things are seemingly being ignored, or people maybe just feel like I gave so much to Kickstarter games in 2014 that I can't now. <laughs> maybe like, uh, I, I've done enough of these. I'm done. It's also weird because, like, you look at specifically with Star Mazer, they have the Mega Man composer working on it, and now the Transformer composer. But uh, much more important. But when they started, <laughs> they talked about how we have the Shovel Knight composer and the Mega Man composer, and in my mind, like those two <laughs> things. Should have just gotten them their funding. Yeah. Like, right off. And if Shovel Knight's soundtrack, everybody loves Shovel Knight's soundtrack. Yeah. It's but spectacular. Think of if Shovel Knight had come out of the gate saying, like, we have the composer from Mario composing mm-hmm. this game. Like, it got, Shovel Knight got super, super funded, but it would have been funded so fast yeah. if that happened. So yeah. the fact that there's, that Star Mazer still can't get full. Full funding, and it has the guy who did the me- with who worked on Mega Man. It has his name on it. It's like what? I, yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> uh, so my point is, these games deserve to get funded. Yeah, more than past Kickstarter games have, yeah. in my mind. Yeah, and they're not. And it's very listen, sad. everyone. Every game Kickstarter game that came out in 2014 was a piece of hot garbage. Fun Ex- strife and star face. Exactly. You don't know what you're doing. Let's, let's get on with it. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on to a cool game that's on Steam Early Access right now. A really cool game called Darkest Dungeon. Ooh. And it's got a great name because let me tell you, this dungeon is dark. Super grim dark. <laughs> this game is so grim dark. 
This game is so oppressively grimdark. So Darkest Dungeon is a sort of side-scroller, sort of team-based RP combat RPG title, um, which involves you getting together a little ragtag gang of ne'er-do-well medieval folks and delving into a very dark dungeon <laughs> to get stuff. You know, why do adventurers go into dungeons? To get stuff. Um, Fat loot. This game it has a ton of depth to it. Um, you get maps of all the dungeons, you go out on individual expeditions, which you get to, like, choose your gear for Oregon Trail style before you go in. You don't know what you're going to find in there, so everything's like a chance. Like, what do you spend your money on? What do you not? Who do you take with you from your group? Um, characters in this game are going to die a lot. Because nobody's really got that much health, and you go on these long hauls through dungeons. Your characters might go crazy. Your characters might develop alcoholism or catch tetanus from something. <laughs> tetanus? Like, this game does not screw around. Um, and it's just, it's got a really great um, dark art style that reminds me a lot, actually, of um, the art in, like, Hellboy. The Hellboy comic series. Oh, it does kind of look like that, yeah. Heavy shading with, like, solid colors in between. Um, and uh, really lends itself well to the style. Um, the game's got this great, like, music a la Diablo 1 with lots of really heavy echoing drums and, like, chants and things like that. Um, and then a absolutely spectacular narrator that follows you through the whole game just during combat. Anytime, like, stuff is happening, this narrator will say just these oppressively, like, downer things about what's going on. Like, so even if you're doing great, he'll say something like, like, but remember, death waits around every corner. And it's like, oh, well, thanks. Is it as good as the narrator for Bastion? It's right up there. All right. It's not quite Bastion, but it's, it's, it's getting there. Mm -hmm. Like, it's different. To, yeah. Because, you know, Bastion's narrator was like a storyteller. You know, he was telling you. The he whole narrated movie. everything he narrated you did. Everything. <laughs> this guy's not quite as narrating everything and not really telling a story. More, he's just there to make you feel bad. <laughs> Good. <laughs> but it does a great <laughs> job, and he's just got a cool voice. But yeah, this game looks super neat. Um, it's on Steam Early Access for twenty bucks. Um, the game is not yet done. Um, it's supposedly going to be coming out um, in its full form in August, but you can get it now and get all the updates until then. Um, but even in its current state, it, like, feels complete. Like, it feels like it could be a complete game, right? Like, just as it is right now. Because um, it's already really polished. Um, and another thing they did, they've got these great 2D sprites for all the characters and enemies. But when you are doing combat and you use spells or attacks, they um, the sprites are barely animated. They just have alternate sprites that it'll switch to. It's like two frames of animation. But they tweak the camera when you do stuff. So it's on like a 3D plane with these 2D models and they just tweak the camera or move the camera during your act character's attacks and actions in such a way that it looks like this really like visceral animation. Huh. Even though almost no animation's actually happening. Like you feel the hits. And they did a really great job with the presentation of the whole thing. So if you're into like dark fantasy and, like, strategy RPGs and things like that that really require you to put a lot of thought and time into them. Like, this looks like a fantastic pickup. It's just got a lot of flavor to it, also. Um, so, yeah, I wanted to just plug the hell out of that because I saw the gameplay of this and I was like, this game, great. <laughs> like, um, this is a really cool looking game. I had actually been having Steam uh, recommend this to me oh, yeah? recently. Because I like dungeon crawlers a lot, right. so... I think this will be right up your alley. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, so that's Darkest Dungeon. While we're on the subject of Steam and Ergo Valve, mm. um, let's talk about... Um, why don't you bring us into this article about, about Valve? Oh, and an article um, from PC Gamer from February 9th. Uh, we learn that Valve is going to be changing up its uh, Steam Greenlight system. Yes. Uh, specifically, they're uh, making developers stop uh, offering game keys for green light votes. So, for those who don't know, the way the green light uh, works is the games get upvoted, and mm -hmm. if they get upvoted enough, then they get yeah. to be greenlit. They I get guess. You basically you get mm -hmm. enough votes, they'll hold host your game on Steam. Yeah, that's all there really is to it. 
Uh, so a lot of the developers was, would say to people, okay, well, here, you can basically have the game yeah. if you vote for it. Yeah. Uh, Which Valve has said, no, no. Yeah. Please it stop doing that. Turns out that led to, like, some some major corruption. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Valve themselves said in the message uh, that they put up, um, when you give away copies of your game in exchange for votes, this is an, did you ever see this in an article from PC Gamer? Yeah. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I missed that. Uh, we don't think these votes accurate. Uh, when you put up your game in exchange for votes, you put us in a really uncomfortable position. We don't think these votes accurately reflect, reflect customer interest, and it makes our job harder in deciding which games customers would actually buy and play on Steam. Because, I mean, I see where they're coming from. You give someone a free game, like, people are going to take it. Yeah, and if all they need to do is click a thumbs up button to get it, then why wouldn't they? Yeah, and like, then and then they go on to make the argument that like, well, now all developers have to do this. Yeah. Um, or they feel like they have to do this to get yeah. upvoted, and then and it's just not how the system is supposed to work. No, so I mean, it's and it's it's obvious that Steam Greenlight has always kind of been, maybe not. It's never been perfect. No, <laughs> um, by any stretch of the imagination. And neither is Steam Early Access. Talking about Darkest Dungeon. Or that dinosaur game that, or that got dinosaur, canceled. Yeah, the dinosaur game that got, just got canned out of nowhere. <laughs> um, Steam Early Access is also just a total crapshoot as far as whether these games are actually going to come out. You get something like Darkest Dungeon, it looks like it's already really together. You can probably pr feel pretty safe about that. But like you said, um, Stomping Land, the dinosaur game, um, looked... Not nearly complete, and was not. They were in, like, pre-alpha. Um, but they released it on Steam Early Access like that, and got a bunch of money from people, and then the game kind of fell off the face of the earth. And they it was removed from Steam Greenlight, or, or uh, Early Access completely. But Dan, what about Yogg's Ventures? Oh, no. <laughs> let's, not, let's not dig up that corpse. <laughs> no, we really shouldn't. We really shouldn't. Uh, but, um... Too soon. <laughs> It'll always be too soon. <laughs> so, uh, but what's, I guess the positive thing to take away from this, other than the fact that this won't be happening anymore, yeah. uh, is that Steam is saying, it does recognize that it's a flawed system, and it's saying we're continuously working to try to improve it. Yeah. And this is the next step of us trying to do that. Yeah. Uh, and I guess that's good. Yeah. Uh, there are plenty of developers or just game companies uh, that certainly would either be too pig-headed to change a system that they put in place. Yeah. Um, we're we're going to see what Nintendo does about their YouTube creative yeah, system. Yeah, they haven't done anything about that yet, have they? I don't think so. I haven't yeah. seen any news on it this week. No, I feel like we would have known if they had, they had changed some of that policy. Um, but yeah, I mean, good, good, for, good for Valve for stepping up to the plate and trying to do something about it. Hopefully they'll actually like push this and get get it taken care of. Um, so um, we're getting now into or let's talk about Bethesda first, and let's talk about Bethesda and let's talk about swatting. Um, we'll talk about Bethesda first because it's short. Um, hmm. So Bethesda is going to have their first ever E3 concert or concert <laughs> E3 conference. There's probably year. also going to be a concert. I'm sure there will be. Um, so. Uh, at E3 this year, um, on June 14th, uh, Bethesda is going to be doing their own separate conference. Um, I mean, EA and Activision and Ubisoft already have their own conferences. Um, so Bethesda doing this now is, in theory, a pretty good sign as far as how business is going for them. Oh, definitely. Um, if they're big enough and, and have enough to show this year that they, they can do a whole conference just for themselves. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, it'll be interesting to see what they pull out for the show. Yeah, uh, I thought I had some... The article is, like, loading weird on my computer. I thought okay. I had more info on it, but this maybe I don't. This is the I only don't. info I saw about it. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> cool. But, yeah, so, it's a cool thing. It's on just, that note, um, uh... Let's do a little station identification. <gasps> hey, everybody. What are you listening to? What are you listening to? We don't know. I would wait longer for your response, but you can't. <laughs> Unless you're chatting with us <gasps> in the chat on chipit.net. Who are we that you're chatting with? 
We are Don't Copy That Floppy. We're a weekly video game news podcast. Uh, we broadcast live on Fridays from 7 to 8 on chipit.net. Uh, you can also check out our archive yes. of our past episodes, which is on chipit.net. It's on iTunes. And the recent episodes are now on our YouTube page as well. Yep. So you can check it out any of those which yep. ways. On Twitter, we are at DCTF Podcast. And on Steam, iTunes, Facebook, YouTube... We are. Don't copy that floppy. So please check us out on social media. We'd greatly appreciate it. Yep. Uh, especially since we've been posted to Facebook like crazy. we got so many yeah. Facebook posts. Yeah. Look no, at them. No one's interacting with them. Go look at them. Go look, yeah. Comment on I'd it. I liked a couple of them. Thank you, Dan. But I guess it doesn't count when I do it. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> uh, the guy who uh, runs the Chip It channel also keeps liking all of them. And I'm like, James, thank you, but it's... <laughs> I need other people to but do it. But thank you, though. <laughs> it's very nice of you. Um, oh, do you want to mention... like the show. <laughs> do you want to you mention the other shows that are on Chip It? Oh, yeah, we should. Um, you can actually bring it up much faster than I can. Oh, oh but if you do want to chat with us, you can chat with us when we do the show live by going to Chip It, and uh, on the top menu, there's a chat button. And you can go to that. You don't have to make a, a an account on there. It seems like you do, because it asks for a login, but you can like type in whatever you want, and that just becomes your username for that session. Um, you can also... Uh, excuse me. <laughs> you yawning over here. You can also uh, listen to Game Over, which I believe is a show about uh, various end-of-the-world scenarios. From video games. From video games. I don't know and if it's started yet. I think it's starting soon. Is it starting soon? Okay, I wasn't aware if it started yet either. Actually, click on that and check. The uh, The other show that you can uh, check out is Pixel Jukebox, which is... Ah, yes. Coming so ga- soon. Game Over is coming soon. You can't listen to it yet. I'm sorry. <laughs> Keep listening to us instead. <laughs> But uh, Pixel Jukebox, which happens every couple weeks, every month, uh, and they, yeah, I want to say like every month they yeah, do it, yeah. um, and they talk about, uh, it's sort of just a countdown list of like chop chiptune music. Cool. Uh, it's it's good. It's got some good stuff on there. Yeah. Support the radio station. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. This is a good radio station. They Glory also, to the proletariat. They, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that took a strange turn. <laughs> uh, but no, the... Uh, <laughs> Also, uh, last week, uh, before we went on air last week, uh, we were told by the guy who runs the station that uh, he added a ton of new music to it, so there's a, a lot of new chiptune music playing on the station, and uh, on... Oh, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, and he's going to be doing uh, like a reskin of the site, and like adding fun buttons and things Neat. like that. So you'll be able to download our episodes off the site much easier. Um, cool. It's going to be really nice. Getting um, all these overhauls all the time. So good. Um, let's talk about swatting. Oh, swatting. The thing we didn't really want to talk about, but we should. Because it's like, come on, people. Um, so swatting, for anyone who doesn't know, um, has become this... Like, I don't want to call it like a fad. But that's kind of what it, it is. It kind of, yeah. Like, fad implies something stupid like Pokemon or something. <laughs> but... Um, or like Cabbage Patch Kids. Well, or... for so for those who don't know what it is, yeah. it's when um, someone's doing a live stream of a game, uh, and then the people who are watching the live stream get that person's address and then call uh, a SWAT team. Yeah, the police yeah. basically, yeah. And, and say s- like there's a violent hostage situation or at this address. Yeah, somebody's got a, a bomb, a baby s- full of guns, a baby full of guns. <laughs> And drugs. And drugs. Those guns have are loaded with drug bullets. They shoot you and you become addicted. Oh no. They shoot you with heroin bullets. <laughs> oh no. So, uh, darkest dungeon. <laughs> darkest. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so as a, so then uh, a SWAT team comes to the person's house while they're live streaming and busts and down their bust door. Busts down the door and tackles them to the ground and says, Get down! Yeah. And all the people who are watching, lol. And think it's the funniest thing ever, but it's really not. It's really, really not. It's really, like, we've, not funny. We've done a couple of swatting stories in the past. Just little things. Because this oh. year, or I should say last year, started. So last year it is when, I yeah, I guess it started. Because I hadn't heard about it before It's when that. it came into the public eye. Yeah. The most, at least. But, but even a, a Bethesda employee, or no, a Bungie employee. Yeah. A developer of Bungie was swatted, even. So it got pretty... Got pretty heated, <laughs> um, but uh, uh, so someone else, uh, someone swatted a Counter Strike player in Littleton, Colorado, 
Um, and that incident closed down a nearby school. <laughs> um, just recently, a Nevada man was arrested in connection with the swatting. He called on uh, a Naperville, Illinois video gamer in July, and that guy who called that one in faces five years of prison. Yeah, that's the thing. So the people who are calling in these these this swattings, is a felony. yeah, it's totally a felony. Like, <laughs> and these people are like, a lot of the trials haven't resolved yet because our yeah. legal system is not that efficient. That, yeah. um, <laughs> but very likely, uh, several of these people are going to jail yeah. for a long time. And we're directly citing a Polygon article from the ninth uh, for this info right now. Um, this is one of those things that people on the internet do that just baffles me. Like, I don't understand why you'd want to. Because I don't even think it's that, like, I don't think it's that funny. And I don't know why, like... I, I mean, like, I get, I get why you'd want to. <laughs> yes. But you'd think that you would be able to use human judgment and, yeah. and not well, do that. Think, this, these are the, the videos posted in this article is this guy who's talking about how the SWAT team busted down his door and, and he was aiming a bunch of guns at this 10-year-old little brother. Yeah, so this is um, like, the most recent story, and the reason why we're bringing yeah. this up is uh, Joshua Peters, who is in Minnesota. live streamer. Yeah, that was almost comical because who plays RuneScape anymore? <laughs> apparently, someone. Apparently, someone. And apparently, enough people that they're streaming it, and maybe, then a bunch of people are watching the stream. Maybe he's the only one, so it's like everybody just uh, plays vicariously through him. I see. <laughs> That must but be enough. how it is. We should get back to the seriousness um, of this actual story. But no, uh, so he was um, he was swatted, and the, as you said, the police came in. And it was it, him and his mother and his brother were home, and his brother, like who was ten years old, answered, answered the door for the, the door. police, and yeah. then they all were just pointing guns at his brother, and, and like everyone was freaking out. Yeah. Uh, and they were able to, like, talk to the cops and... Convince res- them that nothing was happening. Yeah, and like. the situation was resolved, but the, then Joshua Peters went back on and posted a video uh, in which he he breaks down in the video. It's really, really sad. Yeah. Because uh, he talks about, like, how terrible an experience it was, because it obviously was, because if those kids... Or if the, if the SWAT team members... If one little thing had gone wrong there... Yeah. Like, they, someone in his family could be hurt or dead. Totally. Maybe you just don't like him. Maybe you're jealous of his RuneScape channel. Maybe you think he's bad at it. I don't care. Like, you don't call a SWAT team on him. It's ridiculous. Um, um, and uh, by no means also are the swattings mentioned in this article a comprehensive list of the stuff that happened in the past year. Um, you said you looked it up. No, well, I had been watching a, a video, uh, a source-fed video, where they talked about this, and they had cited, I think it was like 400 cases total recorded Which last year. Which is insane. That's, That's so a bad. lot. Oh my god. My question is, is this just video game-related swattings, or is that everything? Is might that like be, might everything, be everything, every falsified like SWAT team call? Yeah, that might have been what like, it is. Somebody, like, put up a fence you don't like, so they called the SWAT team on them. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what neighbors are you about. That reminds me that I need to tell you a story about my aunt later. Oh, okay. Terrific. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming it's not video game related. No. Well, if it was, you could just tell it I'd now. just tell it now. <laughs> yeah. It's just SWAT related. <laughs> okay. Great. Um, um, so, yeah. Swatting, not so cool. I, th- I feel like we feel like a P- we're like a PSA right now. We should do a PSA for this channel. That's we should do a PSA. Oh my well. god, I'm gonna do it. <laughs> uh, look forward to that, listeners. Yeah. Um. So with that done, um, the rest of our news is mostly about uh, video games. Actually, let's. I want to turn to some news oh. about WoW. That's a that's oh, a real yeah. upper. Yeah. yeah. After that swatting. That's a good downer. idea. Yeah. Uh, so I'm gonna cite an article from uh, GameStop. From or GameSpot, I always mix the names up. Everybody does. Come on, <laughs> uh, and that's it's from uh, February twelfth, uh, yesterday, mm-hmm. um, and it's about how uh, when Warlords of Draenor, the new WoW expansion, launched, or maybe not yes. at launch, but shortly after, yeah, uh, they set up this thing where they were like, "Hey, here's this in-game pet named Argy." 
and he's like sort of he's like a goat, like a Draenei goat. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he's adorable. And it, the idea was like you can buy him to have as your pet, and he's ten dollars. He doesn't do anything. He just looks adorable. Yeah, he's one of those cosmetic pets. Yeah. Um, and all of the money that you spend on him will go directly to the Red Cross. Yep. Uh, and specifically to help fight um, Ebola in Africa right now. Right. Because uh, especially when Warlords of Drain are launched, that was like the big news story. And obviously yeah. it's still a really big deal in Africa. We're just hearing about it a little less because the news has sort of moved on from it. Um, so as of they stopped uh, ha- selling that pet as of December 31st. And they revealed how much money they made with it. Which was from the Red Cross. $1.9 million. For a cute goat that doesn't do anything. <laughs> he he saves can. people. That's what he He's, does. Yes. He's a hero. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so this was like such a great feel good story. Um, it was yeah. great that Blizzard did this. Yeah. Um, and talk about a successful fundraiser. Yeah. Jeez. Like, jeez. <laughs> So now, um, WoW is done... We really need to milk this WoW addiction for more good. I know, right? <laughs> well, that's it mentions in this article that uh, this isn't the first time they've done this. So yeah. they've done... I know they have done uh, uh, charity stuff before. Yeah, specifically for uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation. Yeah. Uh, which Blizzard has donated through... Uh, in-game pet sale campaigns. That's the main thing they seem to go with, yeah. <laughs> uh, they've donated, like, millions over the years. Yeah. Um, so, this is great. I'm just so happy about it. Yeah, it's nice. Saving people from illness in Africa with your cute pet goat. Yeah, until somebody swats them. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you I have- need a SWAT team in Africa now! <laughs> Uh, Somebody's well, streaming RuneScape. <laughs> but but thank you, Blizzard, and thanks, Argy. Yeah, <laughs> for all of that money. It's going to do some good. Definitely. Um, so... So now back to a downer. We're on a roller coaster of emotions. Seriously. Why don't you, why don't you helm this one? Oh, God. Since okay. Since you... you, you Looked a little more into this game than I did. This is this was really sad for me. I guess a lot of people probably don't care, but um, <laughs> the uh, in an article from Destructoid from uh, February 9th, Yes, uh, we discover that uh, development on the new Bioware IP Shadow Realms has ceased. Yes. Now I'm gonna say I didn't remember what this was when you sent me this article Thanks, initially. <laughs> I'm sorry, but um, as soon as you kind of jog my memory i was like oh yeah bioware announced a new ip they now they announced it this at gamescom at the beginning of august and we yeah. reported on it on the show uh and i had thought it looked really cool it looked kind of like um shadow run and we haven't heard anything about this since its announcement well because it this, hasn't right? been that long right the only yeah. the most of the news was that they were going into closed alpha and right. they were like giving you know, they were picking their people for right. that. Um, but otherwise, like, they were, still were in early development. Yeah, there was, so, like, a lot for them to do. And to so. a lot of people, I think, like, you know, we saw the announcements, but to a lot of people, since there had been no more public news about it, really, it kind of fell off the radar, like, a little bit. And I kind of expected, like... But you'd expect it, them to bring up something about it, be like, oh, here's some stuff from the game, like a little preview trailer. Yeah, I expected, like, E3 this year, I expected to see a lot from it. Yeah, but um, not it being cancelled in... Five months? Yeah, that's crazy. That's such... <laughs> they dropped that so quickly. Yeah. And you can't say it was because of bad sales because it didn't come out no. yet. No. I mean, you look at Blizzard who, when they canceled Titan. But Titan had been in the works for years. That, yeah. Before and, they finally said, this isn't happening. And there are plenty of games that get canceled in beta. Yeah. Um, especially games that are in open beta because it's just not working. Um, yeah. And that's fair. But this game didn't even get that far. No, it didn't. Um, um, and you mentioned, and I think this is, I also think this is the saddest thing about this, is that this is, it's a Bioware game. So it's like, oh, like, it's not that big a deal for Bioware as a company, and we can be pretty positive. It probably would have been a good game. But the cool thing about it is is that it's a new IP from Bioware. Which we haven't seen in such a long time. Yeah, I mean, we've got our Mass Effect, we've got our Dragon Age, we've got our Star Wars stuff. Nice the old public and just the old republic MMO yeah. and stuff, um, but Bioware hasn't done anything fresh in a while. Um, they've kind of been sticking to their guns a lot. Um, so seeing this just get canned 
is kind of a bummer in that regard. Um, Because who knows when the next time Bioware announces a new IP is going to be. Well, if, maybe they'll last one at E3, and then they'll drop it after five months. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and it's, it's sad because it seems like the team. they said the team that was working on Shadow Realms is set to continue working on our other RPG staples, like Dragon Age, Mass Effect, and Star Wars. So they, did, they, did, they didn't even put this team to work on a different game. They just split them up and put them to work on all their other games. Yeah. So we're, like, getting just more of that, I guess. I guess. Which is fine, but... <laughs> Um, I mean, it's not like those games are terrible or anything. It's also so weird to me because Dragon Age did so well. Not only yeah. commercially, but critically. No, Inquisition did fantastic. Yeah. And, and, and even and the first game did. Oh, did, yeah. Two, two was the only one that really yeah. got into hiccups. But but it's it's so strange that Inquisition, like, we're just coming off, like, the award season in which Inquisition, like, swept... And yeah. all of it's having all these great sales and stuff. So the company should be bolstered with a bunch of extra money, which is the time that companies like are able to take chances on new IPs. So it's weird that they turned around and they were just like, nah. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, we should say that this also, um, uh, um, comes on the heels of an announcement um, that. Uh, it was actually at the beginning of January. There was another little article about it that we see on the side here. Um, a Kotaku article said that the game was rumored to be... Re- re- they were rumoring uh, that it was being rebooted. Not as a free-to-play episodic title, but as a full-release game. Mm-hmm. So this rumor happened about a month ago, and now a month later it's like, no, it's just not being made. Eh? Weird. I, I think it's very weird. Uh, yeah. There's. Uh, yeah. Oh, let's. Uh, it's, no one it's else to say about it. Sad day. Yeah. Um. You know what else is sad? Peter Molyneux's face. <laughs> well, actually, right now, Peter Molyneux is pretty sad. Um, Peter Molyneux. Uh, people, you may know him as Peter. You can plant a tree and watch it grow, Molyneux, um, is the uh, man behind uh, the Fable series of video games, as well as uh, Black and White and Black and White 2 on the PC. Um, He's a big proponent of the god game genre, where you play as kind of this godly being and get to kind of control a world. Um, And he is also just a big fan of games that let the players choose things and alter the flow of the game. Or he supposedly is. Um, And he really seems like he wants to make games that let you do all this stuff, but he keeps not really doing it. Um, Since 2004, with Fable coming out, um, Peter Molyneux has kind of a bad reputation as far as hyping things before they come out. Um, He tends to overblow and exaggerate just about everything. Occasionally he will straight up make up game features that yeah. do not I mean, find their the way into the game. The Planet and Watch It Grow joke is because when hyping Fable, he flat out said that the game would be malleable enough that you could plant trees and they would grow as your character grew. Um, which is not at all true. <laughs> There's not a single thing in that game at all that is like that. Um, the game is a very standard action RPG. Yeah. Like, very standard. Um... So Molyneux recently had, um, in the past few years, um, had, did a project called the Curiosity Project, which was a big, te- it was like a social experiment almost. Yeah, people were like, would chip away at this, this big weird cube, cube. And you paid money to chip away more, and whoever like finished it got like won a prize, basically. Yeah. Um, and the prize was supposed to be um, a role and part in... Uh, Goddess, which was a free-to-play mobile game um, that Molyneux Studio was working on, uh, which went up as a Kickstarter back in 2012 and got um, about $800,000. It was 526,000 euros out of, I believe, like a 450,000 euro uh, asking funding. Now, the role of the person who won Curiosity, which somebody did, was that they would be allowed to be a special character in Goddess, a, a god among, among gods, who could alter and screw with other people's worlds. So they got their, their own special version of the game, basically. In addition to getting 1% of all profits 
um, that God has managed to make. So it's crazy. Which is crazy. And that's actually like, wow, like that's a really impressive prize. Um, so where did everything go wrong? Well, Molyneux and his people didn't stay in touch with this guy about any of this. Because why would you? Because why would you? <laughs> so this has turned into a giant embarrassment, and now Goddess, they can't even add his, like, go, go back and do it now, because Goddess still isn't in a complete enough state. This game was funded in 2012. Goddess is still not in complete en a complete enough state to support the features that it needs to live up to their promise to this guy. Because um, it still doesn't even have any sort of conflict between players in it. They have it all made the PvP system. And Molyneux said that he hopes that people will look forward to playing the game that they actually paid for in six to nine months. Now, and it's it's baffling. This guy just keeps doing this. this. Yeah, this is so par for the course. Which for is Peter sad. Ryan. Like, it shouldn't be. Like, how? Because it's not like his games are bad. No, and I honestly, I don't think that this guy even, like, I don't, he's not trying to screw anyone. No, he either. just way overshoots. Yeah, every time. Every time. Every time. This, it's the definition of shooting himself in the foot. With everything he puts out. And this one, though, has turned into, like, a big, like, fiasco. Because now people are like, what is going on here with Goddess? Why isn't it finished? Why are you making people like, like, why, why, why are you, why have you not delivered on what you promised yet? Like, even the the Curio Project Curiosity thing you haven't delivered on. Like, he's not doing anything. Um, nothing is happening with all of his his projects. Um, uh, and. I mean, the article goes on and on and on about this stuff that Molly. This is an article from Kotaku in particular that you can check out called "Why Did Peter Mol Why Peter Molyneux's Goddess is Such a Disaster." Um, it was put up just today, um, uh, the thirteenth, and it just goes on and on and on about all of this, these problems that have come up in developing this game, and just the it's it's a mess. It's a complete mess. But you know it's um, it's not as much of a mess as what Young Smashers. That's true. <laughs> the game came out. Yeah. Um, but uh, on a in a Polygon article also from today, um, Molyneux uh, says that he is um, he wishes to apologize about all of this, and then withdraw and silence the voice that has so often gotten him in trouble. He says, and I quote, the only answer is for me to retreat, which is he's talking, telling The Guardian this. Um, I love my games, and I love sharing them with people. It's this amazing, incredible thing I get to do with my life, crafting ideas and sharing them with people. The problem is, it just hasn't worked. I'll say. Um, he uh, goes on to say that um, he loves working on games. It's his life. He's honored to be a part of it, but he understands that there's people who are sick of hearing his voices and hearing his promises. His voice and hearing his promises. That's true. That's very That's true. That's really true. So I'm going to stop doing press. I'm going to stop talking about games completely. And I actually, I'm only giving you the, this interview now to answer this terrible and awful emotional time over the last three days. I honestly think the only answer to this is for me to completely stop talking to the press. Um, however, the article goes on to say, as The Guardian points out, since giving that what that what they as a publication understood to be his final interview, he's granted more interviews to other people. <laughs> he's he's got to talk more about how he's <sighs> not doing interviews. So Peter here, Peter here really just needs to stop. He needs to stop. He just needs to stop. It was talking. funny. He said like I'm not going to give interviews anymore, and then I immediately when Dan and I were talking about this prior to the show, I was like, oh, when did uh when did Fable come it's out? Been, Fable one. This has been literally a decade, and I was like, of him. Just making stuff up about his games before they come out. Just it's so easy to just hire a PR person. Yeah, that's all you need. Like, to do. how does nobody? How does how do the people giving Molyneux his money to make these games not see this and say you're not allowed to talk to anybody in this course of this development? How? I don't how is he allowed to just like, even, talk about this? Even Randy Pitchford, they were even like, Randy you're Pitchford. not allowed to talk to yeah. people anymore. 
<laughs> the man who embezzled, allegedly, $60 million. <laughs> it's, 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 it's a real shame about, Mr. about old Peter here. But, um, I mean, he really just needs to stop. Just, Peter, keep making games. Yeah, please, by all means. like Just, we, just we don't talk stress, about them. We want to stress, Peter Molyneux, we don't think he's a bad person. And we don't think his games are bad. Like, I love Fable 1. Yeah, fa it's that, a good game. It's a great, yeah, it's great. And Fable it was, 2 is good, too. Yeah. Like, they're good games. Fable 3, I don't know. I don't but. Know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um, they're good games. And, like, he clearly isn't trying actively to piss all these people off. But he just keeps doing it. Like, the, the poor... I, 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 on the one hand, I feel really bad for him. But on the other hand, I'm just, like, furious with the guy. <laughs> It's 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 a mess. Um, speaking of messes, who pre-ordered a Shulk Amiibo at GameStop? Oh, uh, not a, me. A lot of people did. Though. Oh, did they? Yes, and a lot of people aren't getting them. <laughs> um, because um, last week we talked about how pretty much every single store with with orders on Shulk Amiibos is getting um, heinously short stocked on them. Uh, to the point that they're not going to be able to fill most of their pre uh, many of their pre-orders. Um, in an article from the 12th on Destructoid, um, it has been revealed that uh, these may not be quite as rare as we originally thought, since GameStop has opened a second wave of pre-orders for the character. Um, the second wave is expected to ship on the 1st of May. Um, the downside being that you can't order it online right now, so you actually need to go into a store and place your pre-order if you want one. Um, so anybody who's interested in that and has faith that this second wave will not also get short-stocked, which I don't have much, um, <laughs> go ahead out there and see if you can get one. Give it um, a shot. I mean, I still kind of want one, but I don't know. I don't know about this. I don't care for Shulk. I like him. You didn't play Xenoblade Chronicles. Though. I didn't. It's a good game. I'm... You'd probably like it more if you played it. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. Um... Oh, <laughs> we've got we've got. Let's here. close the show with this. Let's, do you want to close? We have one other article we can talk about, so we can close with that. Nah, because we're low on time. So we're let's low on time. Close okay, with, let's close with this. Uh, my favorite article. Yeah, it's your favorite. So you 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 take this one. Right? Oh man! <laughs> In an article from IGN from February twelfth, uh, we learn th the most obvious truth. The most um, obvious truth of all time. Sonic Boom is the please worst... Call it, please call it Sonic Boom, the rise of lyric. Oh, I'm sorry. Sonic Boom, <laughs> colon, the rise of lyric. Thank you. Is the worst-selling Sonic title in history. <laughs> Let that sink in. And there's now, been some, some bad there's Sonic games. There's been some bad Sonic games. But Sonic Boom now, takes the cake. The thing that... I think is interesting. Well, we, we should bring up, it has sold through just 490,000 copies to consumers worldwide. That's not... For certain game series, that's not terrible sales. No. For Sonic it is. Yeah. Apparently. But what surprises me also is, with that sales number, I'm amazed that some of these other Sonic games sold more than that. <laughs> like... There's some bad Sonic games out there. Sonic but, and All-Star Racing Transformed, what an amazing title, uh, um, managed to sell uh, 1.3 million. Sonic Generations, 1.8 million. And I, even Sonic Lost World sell, sold 710. And I think that's only on the Wii U. Man. <laughs> so uh, that's rough. So, wow, Sonic oosh, sucks. Oof. Well, the problem is, this game is terrible. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> no, there's more. No, you, there more. You've talked about this game. No, this game is terrible, and this game everyone knew was terrible before it even came out. Because like, it was a Sonic game? It, it, no, <laughs> not even. Like it was just widely documented how awful this game was before it even released. Now, this, we compare this to something like Sonic 06, which sold really well, but is probably equally abysmal. And Sonic, if not more abysmal, but Sonic 06 sold fine, because prior to release, they hyped the hell out of it. Mm. And people were like, Sonic 06 is the next generation of Sonic games, you've got to get it. And then everyone got it, and they got a pile of garbage in their face. <laughs> All over their face. All over their face, but it was too late. Sega had their money. 
<laughs> Sega had already skipped town with Sonic, a bag full of cash. Yeah, Sonic's speed at this point is basically just a metaphor for how they take your money and run every time you buy a Sonic game. Um, so, question, do you think that this will affect development of future Sonic games? Well, there is a thing in this article that says what's next for Sega in 2015. Yeah. After offering voluntary retirement for 300 employees and relocating its offices... The and now the worst Sonic sales ever. The company plans to focus heavily in the digital sector. Yeah. Um, we had heard... Uh, there had actually been an article we did a little while ago about how they wanted to do uh, iOS stuff. There is, and Sonic. they are developing a um, Sonic game. And yeah, I think they should just stick to that. <laughs> Probably. Just, yeah, try and, I don't know. Like, I don't know what happened with the development of Sonic Boom, colon, The Rise of Lyric. Yeah. But... <laughs> don't forget. Clearly nothing good. No. I don't know if it was rushed. I don't know if they just made a bad game. <laughs> I don't, like, I don't know. I, I think they have this weird mentality where they're like, well, it's a Sonic game, so it'll sell. So it doesn't matter if it's good or not, so don't put too much time and effort into it. And I mean, they're not completely wrong. They're not, yeah, they're Sonic not Sonic has a bafflingly loyal fan base of people it's who true. all of those mediocre games. It's not until this terrible game that, that people have finally the bad sales stopped have actually buying it. Shown. Yeah. yeah. So now Sega finally can't use that excuse anymore, yeah. but that's probably what now, they were thinking. this is the Wii U game. There was also a 3DS Sonic game that came out at the same time. I'm curious how much that sold. You know, we could look it up, but there isn't time because our show's yes. about to end. Let's post it on our Facebook. Ah... Uh, uh, a follow-up? <laughs> a follow-up. Uh, although this uh, this article's uh, byline, which is funny, uh, says, uh, Don't worry, Sega's still fine, because Alien Isolation uh, sold 1.7 million copies this year. Oh, really? That many? Yeah. Wow, I didn't realize it had sold that much. That's great. At the end of 2014, so that doesn't even count. The, this year. Yeah, yeah, this year. That's great. Cool. Um, what games are coming out soon? What just came out? Majora's Mask 3D and Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate came out just today with the, the new 3DS. I got Monster Hunter 4 at the midnight release. It was real. It's real good. But you didn't get Majora's Mask because there uh, um, there because, were none like, left. I mean, who's even heard of that game series? It's like it's not oh that. no, I just meant that like uh. it was pre-ordered like within an hour. Oh the yeah, pre-orders the were filled, so there's just stuff. like you're not gonna get it. You know, it was funny at the midnight. There were all with like two people there for Zelda, and everyone else there was for Monster Hunter. Oh, that's interesting. Guess I... we know who the more loyal fan base is. Mm. Step up, Zelda fan. Yeah, jeez. <laughs> Soon you're going to have your own Game of Thrones-style TV show. Yeah. I just want to clarify to anybody that I am going to get Majora's Mask 3D at some point. I figured actually, you were, I'm actually yeah. really excited for it. No, it looks sweet. I just know that I'm going to be playing Monster Hunter for two months straight, so I won't have time. Um, we've got a game called Seduce Me coming out on Windows, Mac, and Linux, Mac and Linux on tomorrow. Valentine's what's, Day. What's the rating on that game? I don't know. But we can play it right after we go see Fifty Shades of Grey together in the theater. <gasps> Sounds great. A movie that, <laughs> that has been classified as so tame by the French rating board that even children can go see it. <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> On the 17th, we've got The Sims 4 and Total War Attila, right alongside Dead or Alive 5, last round. And uh, Cubert Rebooted. For oh, those Cubert fans? Yeah, Cubert. Yeah. Um, and Kirby and the Rainbow Curse on the Wii U on oh. the 20th, as well as Order, The Order 1886 on PS4. I, Coming out. I, I am looking forward to The Order 1886. I, I know, we've had this discussion we before. We do, we have this discussion every time. And we're gonna see when it we're comes out. See. You can rub it in my face if it's amazing. Yeah. I'll take it. It's gonna be amazing. I'll eat my hat. <laughs> eat my hat. <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> with that, we're just about done. Uh, you've been listening to Don't Copy That Floppy, um, your weekly video game news source on shipbit.net. Mm -hmm. We broadcast live from 7 to 8 p.m. every Friday. And uh, you can find us on the Facebook, on the Twitter, on the YouTube, and on the Steam. Mm. And even on the iTunes. Even there. Um, we are Don't Copy That Floppy on all of those things, except for Twitter, which we are at DCTF Podcast. Um, so you can go check us out on all that social media, listen in every week, and always remember... Don't, don't copy, copy that, that floppy. floppy.